Hey everyone, Captain Amazing here. And today I'm gonna to talk about raid currency. So earlier, in an earlier video, I did go over the different types of currencies that you should use for farming relic materials and how to scavenge them efficiently. So I do wanna talk about uh, specifically just raid currency for that Mark I, Mark II, and Mark III, how I use it, honestly, it is a really great currency and there's a lot of great ways to use it. A lot of it is as needed, but I'm gonna show you what I do, what I recommend even for early to end game players and hopefully you can learn something from it. So let's jump into it. So the first thing I wanna go over is Mark One. So if you go over to <clears throat> guild activity you'll see these different currencies so this is with guild tokens it is a uh, guild currency as well so i'll touch on what you should do with that so over here at the top you don't see them but um with mark one there are different pieces that are efficient to farm with and some that are inefficient to farm with so a lot of these higher uh, higher tier things that we need a lot of especially they're not it's not here right now but the mark for back to gels those are really expensive same things uh sometimes these things up here can be really really expensive and i don't like to buy them with the mark one so as you can see we get a good amount of guild tokens so usually i like to sit around 200 with these first rows and i'll buy them with this to uh, this currency right here with guild tokens it does it keeps me pretty much average. I do try to make things that are sustainable and utilizing this currency, these guild tokens currencies are, it is a sustainable way, even with buying these Mark seven blast tech weapon mods, which should be the main use of guild tokens. So if you're using your guild tokens, 100%, you should focus on Mark 7 Blast Tech weapon mods. It should be, if you see it, it's a must buy every single time. It's absolutely fantastic for these <clears throat> uh, chromium transistors. It completely makes them negligible in your farm. It's the only way to farm them uh, that is super efficient. So 100%, your first go to for guild tokens is this mark 7 blast tech weapon mods i sometimes i buy you'll see uh for 100 costs you'll see some of these lower lower level gear especially the mark 5 i think they're weapon mods i do buy those i, I try to keep about 100 of them because it kind of makes that those negligible and if you see a lot of characters need them so sometimes you can buy those with these uh, guild tokens it is efficient but mainly it's these uh, higher level pieces, especially the marked Mark IV back to gels and this Mark VII we blast tech weapon mods. That's the, the first and foremost things you should do. As far as Mark I currency, let's jump into those uh, Mark I raid tokens. Mark I power flow control chips. So here you're going to see different types of slicing materials there's some that you won't need so if you have like 2000 plus of those because there's an imbalance when you farm them uh, i would say <clears throat> when you farm them uh, with their actual mod energy so if i have under 2000 i buy it and the equivalent if you would because i refresh my mod uh, my my energy it's about 10 ish to 15 that you can get for these and sometimes we're only aiming for one so this can have the equivalent of 25 to 50 crystals for 100 mark one raid tokens is the way i look at it and it is an absolute steal so every time this refreshes four times a day i come in here and i buy the slicing material and that helps me stay ahead with my slicing materials because if i didn't do this i wouldn't have enough slicing material throughout the week to work my mods efficiently so this is a must buy in the weekly shipments you'll see here ability material omegas so it's something like 820 something for this for five i buy this every single week uh, omegas are still a bottleneck for me if you are if you have you know thousands of omegas or hundreds not a big deal but of a lot of those early to mid to late game players 
are still in this crunch. There's tons and tons of characters that I would love to throw their Omegas on them, uh, even if it's just to increase some damage because they're they're decent characters. But I can't do it because I just don't have the the Omegas to do it. I do have to save them for, and I have about as many Omegas right now as I need to make Zetas. So it's it's not I, I'm not ahead on this at all. So 100% I buy with my Mark One uh, currencies. I, I buy <clears throat> this every time. So character shards, character shards are a must for Mark One currencies, especially for new game players. You don't have to buy everything. As you can see, I have like Kit Fisto here. Who else do I have? I probably like Young Han or something. Jawa Engineer, Young Han Solo. I don't buy them not because it's like prohibitive it's not, it's not a big deal but there's so many things that you can do with this mark one currency that i don't see the point of bringing up characters that i'm not going to use so i didn't farm young han i didn't farm jawa engineer i didn't farm kit fisto because i don't need them all these other ones i got passively like first order sf tie fighter absolutely buy this uh it's if you're looking for um, especially in the early game if you're looking for a way to to have enough dark side ships so that you can do that that um, the Zeta first order SF type pilot here is a steal with uh, mark one currency so that's a great way to get just a fast ship there's uh, I'll make another video on that but this is a good one otherwise I would say farm these as needed but the first ones that you should farm are probably these three so Han Solo General Kenobi Darth Treya all three of them elevate all their teams like Darth Treya even without any Chirotech at gear 12 with her Omicron will absolutely destroy JML uh, if at relics her team is pretty much requires a gl or specific counters to beat so it is a really really strong team really strong in the early game and still holds its strength in end game uh, same thing as han solo he goes with cls even even as a plug and play character having han shoot first and get ahead of the team and stun up a uh, enemy player can be really powerful so it is a must and then General Kenobi, he's just a good Jedi. He's a good tank. I used him with my Jedi Knight Revan team for a really, really, really long time. Like my first Jedi Knight Revan team was Jedi Knight Revan, Jolie, uh, Yoda, and Bastila, and General Kenobi. And that's a really strong team. Uh, it lasts in hard conquest. It's not the best, but with Jolie's revives, Rev Revan's mechanics, uh, General Kenobi's tanking, Bastila's buff on Yoda, and then Yoda spreading those buffs. It has great farming synergy. There's a reason why Jedi Knight Revan was the the shift of how the meta was at the time of his release, and he continues to maintain that. And General Kenobi is a fantastic addition to that. He also can go in a Padme team, a Qui-Gon team, uh, any Jedi team. He's really a great plug-and-play uh, tank for all those uh, any Jedi team. So these three are the first ones you should get. Uh, it's Colonel Stark, also a good one to get with Imperial Troopers. I do uh, usually advocate for a Veers Trooper, uh, Trooper um, Phoenix team in the beginning uh, for new players. So easy buy for there. Dengar is a good one. He's needed for Executor. Uh, you need Luke Sky, uh, Skywalker Farm Boy for CLS. You need Ray for Ray. <laughs> um, so you need Rex. Uh, Rex. Rex is a good one. All these, a lot of these characters are good. You, I'm not saying you need to farm all of them, but as you need them, farm them. Like they're really cheap. It's not prohibitive. If, I I guarantee you, unless you're buying like a good amount of them every single time, you wouldn't even notice the difference if you were farming, especially for these really cheap ones, if you're farming them whenever they popped up because uh, it, it's super, super cheap. So farm characters as needed. This is the best place to farm them. If they're in this shop, don't farm them anywhere else. Just farm them strictly here. I, I don't even know if a lot of these are. I'm sure some of these pop up somewhere else, but this, this is the place to get them, your shards, and it's really efficient. It's the way to go for Mark 1 for those new game players. 
gear. So there are certain things that I buy as a late to end game player that I think is important. Credits, yes, especially early game, like credits is a big crunch. So I have enough passive credits where I don't really need to buy credits. Uh, I, If I wanted to, I could buy credits so I could buy some more mods. But I've noticed that the most mods I buy out of here are usually with this fleet currency. I don't I don't know why the spiciest of mods, the the best mods, the mods that bring the boys to the yard are usually the ones that with this like I it's just how it's just how it is. Like look, out of all these mods here, um the no, like crit chance with crit avoidance, 3 speed out of all these, <clears throat> this one is, uh, you know, not really. But out of all these, Fleet Currency. I don't know why. I'm going to buy it live live on my recording. <laughs> like, it's just the best place is Fleet Currency. So I noticed that I don't even need my credits for this. I very, very, very rarely do I see um, with normal credits. I, and maybe it's just my luck. I don't know. Um, but... Fleet currency has been like what I buy all my mods for and it maybe it's I think it's purely just my luck over time I'm sure I'll find some good mods with normal credits but these fleet credits ha oh, perfection but you can buy fleet credits with <clears throat> with this gear as well so buying credits a good buy absolutely if you're if you're trying to gear up characters I, and i would say especially for those mid to early game players like every week buy a couple like one two three million or something credits it'll help it'll go a long way i see a lot of uh, players say like oh i don't have the the credits to farm mods and when you don't have the credits to farm mods a hundred percent you need to be in here buying credits with your mark one it's not that prohibitive we get tons of this mark one currency honestly i i i can i struggle to even use mine so like my rate is going to pay out soon so i'm going to have to like spend some of this down maybe maybe i'm in a comfortable where i 16 25 no i'm good i'm good right now so i don't have to spend any but usually that's what i do i'm like oh i'm my raid payout's coming soon let me spend it down and just like dump a bunch into random gear but um, because i i mainly farm this this one right here is important to me and this one right here is important to me the rest is just as i uh, as needed but <clears throat> so credits a buy droids i would say no don't do that don't buy droids fleet credits i would say unless you're specifically low on fleet credits for a gl ship let's say you unlocked a gl ship and you're like oh i didn't account for how much fleet credits i need to take that fleet up because it's about 10 million and you don't have it and then you don't have the you're trying to get the prestige abilities but you're held back by fleet credits then yeah absolutely spend some fleet credits but i will say this the bottleneck for fleet credits does break and if you just focus on one fleet at a time you don't really have to accelerate it all that much and once you start getting good fleet placement then that credits just starts rolling in and, and it really doesn't become that much of a problem so i would say normal credits a must buy for working your mods and then leveling up characters as needed it's just it's just a very essential part at some point you do break it and then uh, for me without accelerating it it's about at a net neutral i'm still rarely i would say maybe once twice twice a month or something three times a month i'll i'll level a character to 85 it's really not that frequent sometimes i'll go longer and not have to level a character to 85 uh just because i i i'm just past the point where i'm doing that all the time so credits aren't that prohibitive when you stop uh leveling characters so not uh it, as needed but if you're struggling on mods then I would say watch my mod guide videos and then work on being efficient with working your grays because they're still worth uh, taking them to level six or level nine and then, you know, selectively choosing which ones you take up to 12 and then which ones you slice. And that'll that'll help with your credits. But, if you know, buy credits <clears throat> next gear. So there is gear that I buy every single week regardless of if i need it or not and i try to stockpile as much as possible so unfortunately i don't see it in here so let me show you why so i for erodium heat sinks these 
Mark III. As you can see, I have a good amount, about 640 right now. So let's click this, let's go to craft. So these, this is the best way to farm these erodium heat sinks. And to, you need a ton of them, like an absolute ton. So I need, I have enough right now for my profundity farm. I'm working on JMK. I still need, I don't know, about 400 more or something for my JMK farm. So <clears throat> it's five every one. So if you buy it like once or twice a week, then you, erodium heat sinks won't become a problem for you. So or as you can see, like I have a good amount, I'm uh, well ahead of my farms and it isn't a bottleneck for me because I prioritize buying Mark III hollow projectors. And if I ever see them, I usually buy them and I would say at bare minimum, you need to buy at least that 125 pack a week. It's only about like 2000 something Mark I uh, a week and if you, if you you look it's not that prohibitive to buy the the omegas to buy slicing material to buy mark 3 hollow projectors to buy a few uh a few million credits and then you still have tons every week to buy your gear and as far as buying gear with mark 1 it's really as needed so if you if you're just like stockpiling there's a few things i like to buy to start uh to stockpile I do try to keep them above like 150 or so. If I see them low, I'll just like refresh it up. I'm, I'm at a low because I've been taking a whole bunch of my uh, lower gear or my teams that don't require Chirotech. I've been just like taking them up because they're they're pretty useful. Um, like Imperial Troopers, I did Night Sisters, uh, Separatists, but all before these bundles, of course. So. Uh, not the best of investment, but sometimes you can't predict things, these things, right? But uh, I've been doing that, and it's been really cheap, and it's side, it's side farms that I've been doing. But Mark III, uh, Mark III Carbontes, these, uh, these, Mar I'm sorry, Mark III, Mark V stun guns are Mark V stun guns are good buy, as well. So Mark V stun guns. Mark III Carbontes, Mark III Stun Cuffs. You can't have enough enough of them. So I buy, if you don't need any specific gear, that's what I buy. And then if I, if I do have character, and probably the most efficient way to do this is as you're gearing characters. So if you look at your farms, let's say I'm going for JMK, and it's just really as needed. So, hey, I need Stun Cuffs. So I would come in here. And I would look and I'm like, oh, hey, stun cuffs right here. Boom. I'll buy that. Now I can upgrade this character. There you go. And that's that's the most efficient way to do this. And then, oh, okay, I need these. So it's not popping up right now. So next time I'll buy these Fabrotec data pads and then I'll gear them to gear 12. And that's honestly the, the most efficient way of using this is just as needed for gearing your characters. You just fill in the holes and that's what gives the, the strength of this gear is that you don't have to specifically um, hope for things to drop. You just farm it as needed for the gear. So if you, if you have specific characters you're trying to gear, just buy what you need. If you don't have characters that you're specifically trying to find, then Mark III Stun Cuffs, Mark III Carbontes are always a solid buy, and then Mark V Stun Cuffs. If you farm those three just to fill this down, then you'll be 100% fine. You can also just like this, oh, I'm low, I'll just buy it. And you can do that and just keep up like 100, 200, 400. I've seen people at different levels of wherever they want to be. And then that's also a good strategy as well. Because this this uh, currency comes so frequently that it's not a big deal. Next, we have the Mark II raid tokens. So Mark II raid tokens. <clears throat> I did have a, a viewer here shortly start talking about how he didn't want to use Mark II raid tokens because it was too prohibitive for him to farm uh, for like Jedi Knight Luke with Hermit Yoda, Wampa, Rebel, um, Officer Leia, Orga Organa, Gas, Darth Malak. I would say the only one that's not worth it is Imperial Probe Droid. 100% Imperial Probe Droid like passively farm him whenever his uh, like that event comes by and you get free shards of him farm him that way he's not worth uh he's not worth gearing up or or using this currency on it's too it's too it's too good for him but these other ones 
if you're farming Jedi Knight Luke, if you're going um, even just Wampa, like Wampa is a fantastic character. I think everyone should accelerate and buy this character. He is a or she is a fantastic um, uh, Omicron solo character. Uh, no matter where you are in the game, uh, if you're getting this currency, farm Wampa, get her at least to gear 12 get her the omicron i would say relic five is a good place to keep her uh, and then you're you'll be golden so <clears throat> rebel officer Lo leia organa and hermit yoda hermit yoda is an excellent jedi a great support jedi um excellent in the excellent with jedi knight revan excellent with jedi knight luke excellent with jml um like cal Custis. If you, if you have those later characters, I'm sure you probably have Hermit Yoda because, for one, he's a requirement for Jedi Knight Luke and JML, so you'll have him at Relic 3 minimum. But um, Hermit Yoda is a great character. Would I accelerate Hermit Yoda if you weren't going for, like, Jedi Knight Luke, Jedi JML? Probably not. Would I accelerate Rebel Officer Leia Organa if you weren't going for um, Jedi Knight Luke? No, I wouldn't. Uh, but if you are... Absolutely, if you're going for Jabba, Jedi Knight Luke, and every, I honestly think um, Jabba would probably be the best first GL. So I, I think um, it's a great farm to do. So if you're trying to do that, don't try to passively use your get get to farm these things. This comes so slow, and it, it took us like months and months and years, and we couldn't recommend farming JML or Jabba or Jedi Knight Luke because it was so slow to farm these with uh with get one and get two and no one does light side hoth anymore so you can't even get uh rollo shards so i would say a hundred percent farm these with mark two just take the hit it's not that big of a deal it's not it's not so prohibitive of your account or so slow that you can't do it but it's worth it overall <clears throat> other than that when you're farming with mark ii the way i do it here is first and foremost i do it by farms so i will go and right now i'm farming like right right now i'm finishing my profundity and i took them all to relics so i farmed all the gear 12 plus pieces at one batch at a time uh, and that's how i recommend you farming these things so next my next farm is jmk so i'll farm all the right side pieces for jmk so <clears throat> these mark 12 hollow lens this uh, all these right here so this left side piece the data pads the uh the uh what do you call it shield generators <clears throat> this is the same piece I don't use it to farm these like med packs. You can farm them with something else and then this you farm with Mark 1. So these these when I say right side I don't mean this piece right here. I mean these two and then <clears throat> specifically this middle piece for the finisher. So I farm all the right side with my Mark 2 first for my entire major farm I'm doing. Um, so I just knock it all out. The only thing I don't farm with uh, Mark II on this right side is Fusion Furnaces. The reason I don't farm Fusion Furnaces is it's the only piece of gear that I farm with light side energy. So, I'm sorry, with uh, with Fleet Energy. So if you come here, you see 2E Fleet Battles. This is an excellent node for getting some Bronzium wiring. Well, it's, it's an okay node for getting some Bronzium wiring. Uh, so it's the best that we have. So I farm only T 2E and it gives me more than enough fusion furnaces that because it's the most prevalent gear 12 plus piece and I can break it down for relic nine material. So, so our, yeah, so it's a absolute must farm, but everything else I don't farm. So I don't farm, I don't farm med packs with fleet energy. I don't farm <clears throat> I don't farm these data pads for fleet energy. I don't farm any of that. Uh, the only place I buy any of these things except for maybe conquest because at the end of conquest I'll have some extra burritos and I'll buy some pieces with them. But other than that, like I use um, only the mark II to farm these right sides. The left side, all these pieces this and then these, you farm with shard shop currency. So the 360 shard shop currency, that's how you get all these things. You can accelerate um, med packs with get one. So the only place uh, the only place I use my get one except for saving the 69k for 
gas is these med packs. So the only thing I buy on Get One is med packs. <clears throat> Everything else is uh, Shard Shop and Mark II, and that's how you efficiently get there. Once you have the right side completely done for your entire farm, that's when it gets a little um, a little more flexible with Mark II. And then it kind of goes into Mark III as well. So I'll talk about what I do with Mark III, and then I'll tell you what I do once I finish the right side on Mark II because it, it gets a little more convoluted there. But Mark III, um, specifically, the only thing I buy is Electrum Conductors, Zimbittles, Impulse Detectors are the only things for me that's worth it. Aero Magnifiers are worth it if you need them. So if you don't have... Um, if you don't have these and you're trying to build relic gates, this is the most efficient place to get them. So buy your relic amplifier or aero magnifiers here. I do not recommend buying Gerda keypads here. So aero magnifiers, impulse detectors, zimbittles, and electrum conductors are good buys. I don't buy aero magnifiers because I get enough passively from TW and I built up a little bit of a, of a horde uh, when, the, uh, when the last raid was here before they switched to the rotating one. So I was able to farm enough aero magnifiers to, to keep myself going. Um, if I ever start running low, 100% I'll buy them here with Mark III. But the way I do it, because everything else here you can get in different means, erodium heat sinks, chromium transistors, bronze wiring circuit boards, never buy any of these with <clears throat> with the mark three currency it is an incredible waste don't buy heroium heat sinks chromium transistors bronze wirings carbonite circuit boards i don't care how much you are hurting on this mark three just never buy them there's a, a thousand other ways that you can get them that's more efficient than this mark three um, the most efficient is these electrum conductors as you can see i have a, about 400 of them to zimbittles you need about it depends on how high you go on um on relics because the you know you need 20 of these for uh relic 8 and relic 9 but you only need uh 10 for relic 7 so i try to keep like a, a 4 to 1 ratio from electrum conductors to zimbittles you can keep like 3 to 1 and that would probably be fine as well but <clears throat> i do use a lot more electrum conductors than i do zimbittles so that's what the ratio i try to keep is 4 to 1 personally and then um, impulse detectors I farm these as needed and what I do with that is I'll farm with my Mark II and I'll buy these three pieces. So I'll buy this piece right here, the stun gun, I'll buy this one right here for the data pad and I'll buy these fusion furnaces with Mark II and then I'll sell them as i buy them to build these because the the conversion rate isn't too horrible so it's 13 for one of these is that here let's let's see if that's correct because I, I may have had some extra ones 10 yeah it's a looks to be about correct one two three yeah 13. so 13 of these pieces for one uh, it's not too crazy not too prohibitive so while i'm using my mark three to buy uh, or Mark II to buy these Gerda keypads. I'm using my Mark III to buy these impulse detectors or electrum conductors, Zimbittles, and then impulse detectors. And then once I farmed my 20 gear, uh, gear keypads or Gerda keypads or however many I need for my current farm, then I start using my Mark II to buy these and my Mark III's to buy these impulse detectors because usually you need two to one because you'll need 20 impulse detectors for relic eight and then 40 for uh, another 20 for relic nine. So that's 40 overall to the 20. So I use the Mark threes for the impulse detectors. And then once I have the Mark twos have finished this one and whatever passively I've sold from just farming these uh, to where I don't need as many, then I'll start using Mark two to accelerate these impulse detectors until I have enough. And then once I have, and I'm building it from the ground up with that, with my, my raid currency. So uh, I'll, I'll buy enough electrum conductors for the, for my farm. Then I'll buy enough elect Zimbittles for my farm. Then I'll start buying the impulse detectors with the uh, Mark three while I'm farming Gerda keypads with my Mark twos. And then I'll come and finish everything with my impulse detectors. And then once I have that for everything for my current farm, I'll go <clears throat> and I'll start accelerating that left side piece. And what I mean by that are is I'll start farming, uh, f 
farming either uh, Nubian security scanners or um, these med packs, I'll start farming them with uh, Mark II. And it's not efficient, right? Like the most efficient way is this right side. But if you're about to finish a farm and you finished all the right side, you finished all the higher relics um, and you have everything that you need and the only thing you're waiting on is these left side pieces, that's when I use my um, Mark II to finish off the left side. And that's the order that I do it in. So it's, it seems a bit convoluted, it seems, but as you start doing it, I focus on like one big farm at a time and I try to like manage my resources that way. And if you notice the key of <clears throat> what I'm saying is, is that you don't have to be super efficient with this. You can just spend as needed. And even if you just kind of go willy nilly with it, I'm sure you'll be somewhat effective because this currency is so good. As long as you stay away from like those traps, don't buy Zetas, don't buy keypads, don't buy lower level um, relic one to five uh, pieces with your Mark three. Try to um, stay away from those pieces here that cost like 4,000, 4,500 for these, you know, that's like really, really expensive, 4,250. So crazy, crazy expensive. So if you can, I try to buy, you don't need a lot of these. You can buy them every once in a while if you need to. Uh, but I try to buy those pieces that are like crazy expensive that you need a lot of, specifically those Mark IV, uh, IV back to gels. I buy them with this. Um, same thing with these, uh, these Mark 9 biotech implants and these droid collars uh, and sometimes these mark 4 hollow projectors and that keeps my mark 1 relatively efficient um, as far as uh, mark 2 back to gels this is uh, the place that you buy them with this squad arena tokens or you can request them from your guild so like this is the way that you buy mark 2 back to gels so if you're running out of them um, you need to buy them here in squad arena because there's nowhere else really to get them so you, you just have to do that or you can you know ask your guild and if they're uh if they're ballers they'll they'll help you out with that so <clears throat> that's how i spend my raid currencies that's that's the most efficient way one farm at a time there's certain things like buy your shards for what you need first there's things that you need to buy overall like every single day or every week which is these um slicing materials and <clears throat> and also this omegas if you need it and then as needed buy your buy your credits to accelerate it you don't have to go crazy if you just buy a few million every week and then if you need to um if you need to buy gear then farm gear as needed for your characters first so you go in and you see like oh I'm, I'm trying to gear this character which piece do I need then you buy that and if you don't have any of those or you're not gearing, gearing characters and you're just trying to stockpile then mark three carbontes mark three stun cuffs mark five stun guns and that'll that'll build a nice uh, if you have tons of those, you can probably accelerate uh, tons of characters without um, without needing to stop. So that's the best things to stockpile. And then <clears throat> just overall, you know, just just have fun with it. It's uh, it doesn't have to be um, super sweaty. You, you if you don't want to manage this um, and be like super highly effective, you don't have to be. Um, just try to try to be smart with your um, with your purchases, and you'll be just fine. Uh, other than that, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. If you have different ways that you use currencies or different ways that you farm, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, uh, please like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Take care.